journal everyone it's Erin here and I'm so excited to be setting up my 2023 journal this is something I look forward to all year I'm moving into the crimson wand bullet journal from sassy pigeon hq which is going to be my 2023 part one bullet journal and I'm getting started for my cover spread here by printing out the numbers 2023 2023 with my fromemo mo2 mini printer just before we get in too deep, I just wanted to mention that everything I'm using in this video that I can link to, there is a link to in the description so you can get your hands on anything that takes you fancy. Now this is kind of an unconventional way to use a thermal printer with your bullet journal. So I've printed out the numbers and my cat Mitsu's come to join me, isn't he a sweetie? And I'm actually cutting them out to use as stencils rather than stickers. I'm gonna hang on to them and probably use them as stickers maybe in my reading journal. But for now, I'm just gonna use them as an outline because I wanted this pretty font and I didn't wanna spend ages trying to work out how to transfer it into my journal. You can also print with a normal printer and trace the letters or the numbers into your journal if you'd rather do things that way if you don't have a thermal printer. But this way it worked pretty well for me. So I just cut them out with scissors and traced around them with a mechanical pencil as you can see here. And I really wanted to have just the outline of the numbers on the page because I had best laid plans to do a watercolor thing I'd seen on Instagram, but turns out that doesn't work so well when you're using paper that isn't watercolor paper. So I ended up just coloring them in with watercolors as normal. <laughs> You'll see that in a second, but while we're working our way there, just know that I am not always Little Miss cover spread. I don't always want to do a whole lot of stuff just to introduce a new part of my journal, but at the beginning of a new year, that's always a time when I'm happy to take more time and kind of really get involved in the process of setting things up because it feels like setting myself up mentally for the year ahead as well. Even though I realize at the time I'm uploading this, it's actually still October. I just like to get organized really early, what can I say? So the process of setting up the cover spread is a little bit self-indulgent maybe. I just, I really enjoy it. And because the first pages of a new journal or a new year can be quite overwhelming, especially if you have a lot of things that you wanna set up, I actually did this over the course of about three days. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to finish everything in one day if you don't have time. Also, of course, you can make things simpler than the way that I'm doing things. Just journaling is supposed to be about what works best for you. So just because you see me do something doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna work for you, although you can try it and see how you go. That's the beauty of it. My watercolor set here is from Faber-Castell and I really like it and I'm just using it with a water brush to fill in some burgundy maroon kind of color and some navy-ish blue because I wanted to match the cover of my journal. It's not a color I would ordinarily pick for myself. The lovely Beck from Sassy Pigeon actually gifted me this journal which was very very sweet. Thank you Beck. I love it so much and I will have a comprehensive review of this journal coming soon so keep an eye out on my channel for that especially if you're based in Australia because it's always nice to support an Aussie brand when you're an Aussie yourself. I don't typically reach for red. It's not really my color, but this more blue based red, I think is absolutely stunning. And I'm so glad that Beck chose this one for me because I think it's so beautiful. If you like your pages super minimal, you could totally leave this here. And that would be a very striking intro to the year. I'm gonna add some flowers because that is what I apparently love to do at the beginning of a new year, except for one year. I think the beginning of every new year in my journal ever since I started in 2017 has been floral. <laughs> It's just how I roll. So I started out with some washi stickers which have a beautiful gold sheen to them and I'm adding some brush pen flowers. If you're interested in the way I'm setting up these brush pen flowers, rather than having me try and teach you because they're new to me as well, I actually learned them from Shada Campbell and I will link to her video where she teaches you how to do these brush pen flowers in the description down below so that you can also learn. I've stuck to the same three Tombow Jewel brush pens for all of my flowers. I've got the navy 569, the pink is the 761, and the burgundy is the 757. I really deliberately bought this burgundy pen just to match this journal. That is the extent I will go to for a new journal setup. And for the greens, I'm using the 192 and the 249 to have some nice leaf variation. Last year I did some fairly involved flowers, so I really knew that this year I wanted them to be a little bit easier, something I could kind of throw down on the page without thinking about it too hard. So I'm not sketching them out first in pencil and I'm not going over any pencil lines with fine liner first. These are just brush pen and nothing else. 
I also didn't want them to overwhelm the page too much, so I'm just positioning them in the bottom left and the top right corners of the spread so that they introduce the theme because it's going to be all the way through this setup, obviously, that being the point of a theme, but also uh, not too overbearing because I do also want to fit a quote on this spread. One of the great things about washi stickers being that they're made of paper is that you can kind of draw over them with your markers and it will kind of look like things are layering up as though I magically drew those gold, beautiful, detailed flowers by hand, even though they are in fact stickers and I did not draw them at all. <laughs> It's time to add my quote to this spread and I didn't want it to be overwhelming considering there's already some stuff going on on this spread so I'm adding my quote in with letter stamps, lowercase ones, with a silver paint pen so that it ties into the cover with the silver wand embossing but also it's not kind of too in your face, you know, it's sort of soft. My quote for 2023 is what is life but one grand adventure which I think is really appropriate because this is the year I'm gonna start traveling again and I'm really excited about it. Just adding a couple more florals to balance out the layout and then we're going to move backwards actually rather than forwards. You know this awkward first page of the book? I decided last year that I liked having my grid spacing page there and I'm going to continue that tradition but with a bit of a twist. And it is here that I pay tribute to my grid spacing bookmark queen, Tracy Tyler Revel, who came up with this incredible idea to cut out the last page of your book and make a bookmark out of it so that you can just place it over your pages when you're setting up a new spread or a new page and never have to count spaces ever again. So I cut the last page out with a craft knife and I'm just using this little paper cutter thing which is fine for finish paper. This is 160 GSM journal paper. I'm just cutting this down based on the size of this bit of scrapbooking paper I have which is a bit of an unusual shape. I thought that would be so pretty for my first spread as a little pouch to keep this in. I'll link to Tracy's video that's all about the grid spacing bookmark so that if you'd like to see how this works and how you can set one up of your own, she has much better instructions than I can give you. This is my first time doing it. But in short, it's a bit of paper that you can keep tucked into your journal, either in the pouch at the back of the book or one at the front like I'm going to set up here, that has all of your commonly used bullet journal measurements on it. So I like to have the numbers in all of the spaces top to bottom and also left to right. So I'll work out what the horizontal measurement is here as well as the vertical. And you can also add on any common page divisions that you like to use. So I like to divide my page in half and in two thirds quite often. So I'll make sure that those are already calculated and on my grid spacing bookmark ruler thing so that I don't have to think about it later on. It's honestly such an incredibly genius idea and I wish I'd known about it sooner. So I'm really excited to be using it this year. I realized the bottom of that bit of paper that's a funky shape that I plan to use for the pouch doesn't really accommodate the bottom of the bookmark so I'm adding some burgundy paper this is actually origami paper from a set that had a whole bunch of colors in it that I picked up from Daiso I'm adding that to serve as the bottom of the pouch so that the bookmark won't kind of get squashed at the bottom I don't have to make it tapered at one end to fit into that other bit of paper and then I'll put the pretty one with the roses on top so that it still looks like that's the functioning part of the pouch and this is just decorative even though it's all actually pretty functional and I'm using my favorite trusty Bostic glue tape, but I wanted to really reinforce it. So I'm actually jumping in with some washi tape. This one is from the Washi Tape Shop's Academia set. It's a lovely dark floral kind of vibe. The colors and the patterns on this washi tape actually match really well with the theme. So that worked out nicely. I'm using my craft knife again, just to cut off the top there of the washi tape so that it doesn't look too messy or unfinished or unintentional. And now we get to write on the bookmark. So I'm gonna start with the numbers one all the way down to the bottom of the bookmark. So this book, like most five millimeter dot grid A5 journals has 38 spaces from the top to the bottom and 26 spaces from left to right. I tried to make the corners pretty with a pretty little corner punch thing that I got recently, but I think my technique is a bit off and they didn't all match. So I kind of just tried to even them up with scissors. Now, I was tempted to add this pouch on next and I even put the glue on it, but then I remembered that I wanted some of those florals represented here and I kind of want them to look like they're also coming out of the pocket. So I thought before I stick that down, even though some of this will be covered up by this other bit of paper, I thought I'd jump in and lay down some more of the same florals that we did on the cover spread. 
And I'll just make sure as we go that they're going to be visible. I'll check by placing that bit of paper over the top just to see where everything's sitting and make sure that it looks nice and balanced once it's all done. Now we can finally stick this pouch down and add our little bookmark inside and see how cute it all looks together. I wanted to make sure there's a little heading on here too, even though I know what the page is, I do share my pictures of my bullet journal layouts and stuff on the internet, so I wanted it to be clear what was going on here. So I'm just adding my grid spacing heading with an Artex metallic paint marker. This one is another sort of burgundy color, and I'm just printing that on an old envelope with those same letter stamps from earlier, tearing it up a little bit, and I'm going to layer that with another one of these gold leaf stickers and another little floral rose moment that is on a PET sticker as well. And together with a little bit more washi tape just to make sure that pouch is extra strong because I'm going to be putting this bookmark in and taking it out of the pouch a lot just to make sure it's all strong and reinforced and stays there for the whole year. I've grabbed out my current journal so I can refer to the grid spacing cheat sheet that I set up for myself at the beginning of July. And on the opposite side of my bookmark, I'm adding the page divisions by thirds and by halves for the horizontal in one colorway, and then the page divisions by thirds and by halves for the vertical. I find that I use those divisions a lot for different kinds of weekly spread, different kinds of goal spread, my musings page sometimes, stuff like that. So those are the divisions that I want to have really handy. I did have quarters as well last year, but I didn't find that I needed it, so we're not going to use it. And we're going to actually flip forward now to my future log. You might also know this spread as a year at a glance or a yearly overview or something like that. This is that calendar that shows the whole year. And to be totally honest, I don't really look back at this spread very often, but my journal feels wrong if it's not in there. I feel like it's a necessary thing. It's a big kind of planner element. Even if I'm not using it, I wanna have it. Though to be fair, I do all of my long-term planning with Google Calendar, so I like to do that part digitally, but I like to have an analog option as well. So this is kind of my backup, I guess, for if something happens and I lose my data on my phone, which wouldn't really happen these days. But you know, it's nice to have. So the top and bottom of the page are going to have more of these lovely floral doodles. They're really fun. They're really quick. I'm enjoying setting them up, so that's nice. And I just wanted to have those kind of line the top and bottom of the page so that there's plenty of room for the calendar in the middle for each month. And of course, to continue my theme and make sure everything looks nice and cohesive. Now it's time for the functional stuff. So I'm gonna add in each month here. This pink line I'm doing at the moment is for the name of each month. And there'll be a lighter pink line underneath that, which is with the 800 Tombow. And that is for the initial for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. If you have very keen eyes, you might be able to see that I've already gone in with pencil and given myself some cues for where each of the numbers are supposed to go for each month. I have messed up my future log in the past and I really don't want to do that again because it's quite an ordeal to fix it. So I have a really good tip for you and if you have sharp eyes, you might be able to tell that I've already put down some pencil markers to prompt me a little bit here. Let me just fast forward through time. You don't need to see me set up all of these numbers. My tip is to plan out your spacing for each month so you know how much space to allow for the name of the month, the initial for each day of the week, and the numbers that you'll need. And then for each month, mark down the first where it falls. So say for April, it falls on a Saturday, so put a one under the S. Mark down 
the date number for the first day of each week for whatever day you like your weeks to start on. Mine is on Mondays. So just the number that falls on the Monday for each one and then the last day of each month as well. And then you can't mess up. Just do that in pencil before you jump in with your pen and you'll be good to go. So now I'm just adding some more florals along the bottom so that the theme is very cohesive and represented everywhere. And then we'll move on to the next spread. Apparently I'm a glutton for number writing punishment and I want to make my hand very tired. So my next two spreads are going to be for my content planner. If you aren't making content for social media, this might not be so relevant to you, but you could also adapt this and make it an assignment tracker for school or something like that. Maybe some kind of project overview tracker for your work, anything you like. I think this is a really versatile setup actually. I want a lot of space for planning here, which is why I'm setting this up so that it's six months to a spread, which means that there are two spreads for this section rather than one like we did for the future log on the previous spread. And that's because I like to plan out my content a week at a time for YouTube because I put up a YouTube video every week. And this is a good way for me to have in mind what I need to be getting ready for, what I need to be preparing for in the coming weeks. I can plan things like Halloween and Christmas stuff way in advance, which I really like to do. And there is a good chance that I will take the second one of these, the July through to December, and transfer all of that data into my next journal. But I like to have it all together in one place to start with anyway, so that I can start thinking about that stuff really far in advance. Not everyone likes to operate that far in advance and I totally respect that, but this works so well for me. Little bit of my floral academia washi tape just to line the sides of the page with this kind of column situation. And I'm gonna add my flowers because they have to be represented, otherwise the theme loses its cohesiveness, through the center of the page right over that center binding. And I think I've been a little bit too zealous about getting my ink all the way into the middle of the page because some of this has actually bled through and you can see it on my first uh, cover spread with the 2023 on it. That doesn't really bother me too much, but if it's something that would bother you, just beware about how close you get to that middle bit of paper. Jumping in with my silver metallic paint pen again with my lowercase letter stamps to add the heading at the top, content planner. Wherever possible, I like to start with the middle of the phrase or the word that I'm stamping so that I can try and center it as best I can. It doesn't always work out, but it's gone pretty well in this instance. You almost, almost, almost can't see this on camera because this 800 Tombow is so pale, but I'm using some pink to offset every second line here so that I can easily trace which week goes with which line of planning. And the next spread is exactly the same except for July through to December. So we're gonna go in hyperspeed through this one because you basically just watched this and this is the same thing again. This next one is a completely new idea for me, but I know a lot of other people have been doing this kind of thing in their bullet journal for a long time. So I just recently got my hands on an HP Sprocket mini printer. I got mine on Facebook Marketplace secondhand. Um, I don't think you can buy them brand new anymore, but they're these little printers. You don't need to refill them with ink. You just buy the paper for them and you can print whatever you like from your phone via Bluetooth or whatever other device you'd like to print from. When I got mine, I was mostly thinking of taking it on my holiday with me so that I can print my travel photos and put them in my journal straight away while I'm away. But 
I thought it would be cool to also incorporate it into these initial pages for my new journal so once a month I can print a photo that signifies what I did that month, the I guess most important memory from it, and stick it on this spread. So I've used one of the HP Sprocket papers that I accidentally printed too many copies of when I was setting up a Halloween layout, which you can see on my Instagram, which is at erinsmith.art, quick plug for myself. I used that as a template to put three spaces to a page, so these are where I'm going to stick down those pictures once I am ready to print them out and have decided what I want to be on each one. They'll probably be photos that I took on my phone throughout the month. And I'm just decorating in the gaps with a little bit of washi tape, that same academia one from before, and also one which has similarly appropriate colors for this setup, which is from the Washi Tape Shop's Fragrance Washi Tape set. And of course, some brush pen flowers, because it's not this theme without some brush pen flowers. Just like with the content planner, this is a three months to a page, six months to a spread kind of setup. So I'm doing just about the same thing with a slightly different layout for the second spread. This is going to get me from July through to December. If you use two journals to a year the way that I do, you might want to have this spread in your second journal, but I like having all of this stuff together and I don't mind getting my old journal out to contribute to it once a month. So I will be doing that. And I have some trackers coming up that I will need to be grabbing my journal out every month to fill out anyway, even in the second half of the year. I just think it's easier to have all that stuff in one place, you know. This next spread, I know this sounds weird, but this is one of my absolute favorite pages to fill out. And when it's finished at the end of the year, I'm always so proud of it. This is my cash flow tracker. And this is the first time I'm doing this in a horizontal setup across two pages rather than the kind of setup where you have to turn your book sideways. And I think it looks a lot nicer this way. <laughs> this is kind of a master spreadsheet of all of my money coming in and going out throughout the whole year. And I know that probably sounds scary, but it's actually really satisfying and empowering to have. So hear me out. That very top row is for income. So anytime I get paid, I keep a note of it. And at the end of the month, I pop it in here. I have a few different income streams. So I have sections for that. The second section is for my long-term stuff. So how much I've got in savings in the bank, how much I've got invested and how much I have in my superannuation, which is retirement savings in Australia. And that bottom table, the big boy is for expenses. So I've divided my expenses into categories. Each month I have a spending tracker within my monthly setup where I keep track of how much I spend on absolutely everything. And then at the end of the month, I tally it all up. It goes in here. And at the end of the year, I can see where all of my money went. Even if it's financial, we've still got to make it pretty. So I'm using the offcuts of the paper that I used for the bookmark to stick behind the page so that I don't accidentally go off the rails and color the sides of the book. And I'm just adding some more florals on the left and right this time. Just in case as you're watching this, you're thinking this theme may not be for you. I do have several other years worth of beginning of the year plan with me videos and I have links to all of those in the description down below so that you can look for some different inspiration. Quite a few of them are floral themes as I mentioned earlier but there is also one I think it's 2021 which was quite minimal and you could absolutely skip the decoration on it and do something very simple and quick and easy if you'd like to. So don't forget to check out those links along with all of the links to all of the equipment that I'm using here in the description down below. Thank you. 
time to jump back in with my stamps to add my heading at the top. This one's going to say cash flow tracker and then we'll move on to the next spread. How exciting is this? My grid spacing bookmark is already coming in handy. This next one is a single page. This is going to be my goals page and I'm dividing it into four boxes because I like to divide my goals into four different categories. I have my personal goals, my financial goals, and then the bottom two will be, it will look a bit strange, but when I stamp the headings on, it'll say ESA and ESP. And those are my two businesses. So ESA is Aaron Smith Art, which is what you're watching right now. My YouTube stuff, my Instagram stuff, me drawing in a book generally. And ESP is Aaron Smith Photography, which is my actual breadwinning job that I've been doing for the past decade or so. Oh, more now, 11 years, wow. But I like to have these in categories so that it's easier for me to think of what I wanna do for each one. And I like to make my goals a mix of things that are pretty achievable so that I can cross them off easily and feel accomplished. And also things that are maybe a little bit ambitious and lofty so that I'm pushing myself. Because sometimes if you don't set a goal that's quite far out of your reach at the time, you might not strive towards something that's, you know, that dreamy. And sometimes you might even actually hit that goal, even if at the time that you set it, it seemed impossible. Although it's also important not to beat yourself up if your feelings change and your goals become not important to you anymore, or if you don't reach them, like we are all human. So don't be too hard on yourself. Also, I switched to a brush tip metallic paint pen for the heading because I'd already used the stems to make the headings for each of the goal sections. Next, I am shamelessly pilfering Jess's then and now spread. You might know her as Jessie Curran. I saw this on Jess's Instagram and I instantly saved it because I thought, what a great idea. So the way this works is you divide your page down the center vertically and you list a bunch of things that are goals or aspirations or just observations of where you're at at that time. So I'm borrowing some from Jess. I'm doing uh, my goal, my savings amount, my favorite food, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, what I'm proud of, something that's an issue, something that I'm trying and something that I'm looking forward to. The idea here is that you fill out on the left side each of those items at the beginning of the year and then on the right side at the end of the year. And you have this little snapshot of yourself a year apart where the things you're into might have changed, the things you were aiming for might have changed. And I just think it's an interesting way to kind of keep track of yourself. And I don't know, I just think it's gonna be really fun. So huge thanks to Jess, what an incredible idea. And thank you for putting it on your Instagram so we can all thieve it. Because I saw a lot of other people also commenting like, I think I wanna try this. I am returning to my layered flowers and a stamped on a separate bit of paper, torn around the edges kind of heading situation to put then and now. I wish I had a plus stamp, but I don't. So I just kind of had to freehand that one and do the best that I could. And I wanted to have that cut out of the paper or torn out rather, so that I could work out exactly where my flowers needed to go so that I could draw them on the page. And that worked really well. I recommend that system. <laughs> I am just realizing now as I record this voiceover that I've forgotten to include a social media tracker, which is kind of a big important part of the initial setup for me. That's okay, I guess I will add it in later. Please let me know if you wanna see that. Maybe we can do it together on a live stream or something. Let me know in the comments. But this spread is going to be for pen swatches, which I don't think is necessary in a journal, but I really like to have it. And I like to do a fresh one for each new journal that I have because sometimes pens look different on different kinds of paper. So on the right page, I'm doing all of my paint pens. These ones are from Artex. They're metallic, they're brush tipped, they're jewel tipped in fact, and they're lovely. Underneath that are my Artistro brush tip paint pens, which I use all the time and absolutely love. And I have a discount code for those down below. So keep an eye out for that. These are pen sets. So I know how many spaces to draw out for each of them. The Artistro set actually also has a white one, but I just left that box off because you can't really see it on the paper anyway. And down the bottom, I've got a little set of Peter Pauper Press. These are just normal pens, they're not brush tip pens, and these are also gorgeous and matte rather than metallic. The Artistros are a mix of metallic and matte. 
and on the right page I'm doing all of my Tombos. The Tombos I do not buy in sets, I just buy individual pens when I need specific colours for specific themes. So I tried to arrange them into something resembling a rainbow, but it doesn't really matter as long as they're all swatched on the page. I just find it easier to pick colour schemes for upcoming themes if I have them all laid out somewhere like this, and it's also nice to look at. And with that, I am all set up for 2023, with the exception of my social media tracker page, which I will add at a later date. I hope you enjoy this little flip through of the year that is yet to start for us. And I hope you've enjoyed planning with me so much. If you'd like to see more from me, you can find me on Instagram at erinsmith.art. I post a stories quite a bit there, so we can hang out some more over there if you'd like. Otherwise, I post a new video every single week, so if you're new here and you'd like to see more from me, don't forget to hit subscribe. You can turn on notifications if you like, and you can also like this video so that YouTube shows it to some more people. And I would really appreciate that so much. I hope that 2023 is your best year yet. And I also hope that we can spend some of it together here on YouTube. Thank you again so much, and I'll catch you again next week. Bye.